In this video we're going to discuss MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. Now previously when I try to add the same IP address to gigabit02, the router complained. The router is not allowing me to configure the same IP address on multiple interfaces. What I can do, however, is create a virtual routing and forwarding instances. So I'll create one called Blue. To differentiate routes advertised in BGP, we need to add what's called a route distinguisher. A route distinguisher increases the route to a 96-bit value. So IP version 4, as an example, is a 32-bit IP address. That becomes 94 bits because of the 64-bit route distinguisher. So in this example, I'm going to call it 100 colon 1. Typically, the first part of the number is your autonomous system number, and then you just specify a number for the customer. Route targets allow you to implement interesting and complex routing capabilities in an MPLS cloud. We're not going to worry too much about that here, but as an example, you could have a central service that multiple customers can access, but they can't access one another. So as an example, the blue and green customer could access the internet VRF, but the blue customer can't access the green customer, and the green customer cannot access the blue customer. In this example, I'm going to set export and import to the same numbers Again, for the CCNA, you don't really need to know this stuff. But I'd like to show you a configuration so that you can see how this is implemented. So notice the gigabit01 interface has an IP address configured, and I could ping my local IP address from the router. Notice, however, what happens when I implement a VRF. Notice that we told that the IP version 4 address is disabled and the address has been removed. So when we look at the configuration of that interface, notice the IP address is no longer there. This IP address was part of the global routing table previously when we had it configured without the VRF. As soon as I enabled the VRF on the interface, the IP address is removed because this interface now belongs to a separate routing table. So what I can do now is put the IP address back. So 172.16.1.1. But notice, unlike before, I can't ping my local IP address. The router is not able to ping that local IP address because it's no longer in the global routing table. This IP address no longer exists in the global routing table. So show IP route doesn't show me 172.16.1.0 in the routing table. Show IP route VRF blue, however, shows us that that route now belongs to the blue VRF. So once again, I can't ping that IP address because that IP address no longer exists in the global routing table. We've learned about 172.16.2.0, but 172.16.1.0 doesn't exist in the global routing table. If I want to ping that network, I need to specify, and I don't actually need to use IP here, I need to specify the blue VRF. So again, I cannot ping 172.16.1.1 using the global IP routing table, but I can ping it if I tell the router to look in the blue VRF or virtual routing and forwarding instance. So what we configured here was a VRF for blue, and we moved gigabit01 to the blue VRF. What we could do is create a green VRF with a separate route distinguisher. So route target export 102, 
I am doing some redundant commands in these videos, but I just want to show you the full process so that you can see all the commands. Notice I've created a blue VRF and a green VRF. On gigabit 01, the interface to the blue customer, we've put the interface into the blue VRF. What I could do now is go on to gigabit 02 and put that into the green VRF and then configure the same IP address on that interface. Notice the router doesn't complain even though gigabit 01 and 02 have the same IP addresses. Those IP addresses, however, exist in different VRFs. So it's kind of like a, a layer three VLAN. They exist in different tables. Show IP route doesn't show us that network. If we look at the blue VRF, we see the network in the blue VRF and another network with the same IP address in the green VRF, but they are separate. If I want to ping the blue IP address, I have to do it that way. If I want to ping the green IP address, I have to do it that way. What I'll do now is configure the two customer networks with the same IP address, and we'll use debugs to prove out of which interface the traffic goes, and I'll also do some Wireshark captures. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.